This video is going to be on Gibbs free energy and determining spontaneity based on changes in delta G, delta H, and delta S. Just to review, um, Gibbs free energy is essentially a way to tell if a reaction or a certain process is spontaneous. Delta G could actually be referred to as the chemical potential. So the lower the potential, the more spontaneous the reaction will be. So again, remember that to tell if a reaction is spontaneous, you look to see if delta G is negative. If it's negative, it's spontaneous. If it is positive, it is not spontaneous. And if it is zero, it is at equilibrium. So what we're gonna look at is actually this table that you have in your notes. It's going to relate delta H and delta S to delta G. So we're going to look at different scenarios that you could have and what that means about the free energy and the spontaneity of the reaction. As we go through, you're going to want to take into account this equation. This is what we're going to use for every scenario that we discuss. So we're going to start with the first scenario, which is enthalpy or delta H being negative and the entropy or delta S being positive. So if the reaction is is exothermic and if the change in entropy is positive like I just said then the change in free energy or delta G is negative at all temperatures. I want to look at the equation to see why this works. You have delta H here. Okay, hey, this is negative. And we have minus T delta S. Okay, so right now we have a negative and if entropy is positive we have a negative value minus a positive. So what we have is a negative becoming more negative. That is why delta G is always negative. So characteristics of this reaction is that it is always spontaneous at any temperature, right? Because whether that T is small or that T is large, the reaction will always be negative no matter what. So an example is the dissociation of N2O gas. So I wrote the example on here for you. So you have the dissociation and you have the delta H. The change in enthalpy, or delta H, is negative, which means heat is given off. And if you take a look at the reaction, we can see that delta S is positive, right? It doesn't matter what value, we just see that it's positive. Again, the reason is because we go from two moles of gas to three moles of gas. So it's becoming more disordered, so delta S is positive. Since delta S is positive and delta H is negative, that's going to make delta G negative, which means the reaction is going to be spontaneous at all times. So this is all about problem solving, right? Look at the values that you would plug in to your delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, and you just have to kind of think through to see what would happen. You know, if you have a negative minus a positive, it's just going to become more negative. So for the second scenario, we're going to look at an endothermic reaction and a negative entropy. So if we have an endothermic reaction, that means delta H is positive. And if we are increasing order, then delta S is negative. So if we have those two pieces of information, we can look again at this equation up here. Delta H is positive and you have minus T delta S. So that T delta S would be negative. Okay, now this is where you really want to, to problem solve and think about it. If you have have minus a negative. What does that mean? A minus a negative means it becomes positive. So you have delta H plus T delta S. That means no matter what, this is going to be positive. So delta G will always be positive. It's always going to be a non-spontaneous reaction at any temperature because T always has to be in Kelvin, so there's no negative temperatures. So when you have an endothermic reaction and you have an increase in order, it will always be non-spontaneous at any temperature. So again, we can consider the formation of ozone from oxygen. Okay, so delta H is positive and we could look at delta S and we see that we're going from three moles of gas to two moles of gas. So delta S is going to be negative. So we have an endothermic reaction, we have a negative entropy, so this would be a non-spontaneous reaction. Notice we don't need a value for delta S to have to problem solve this, right? We could be given one value and these scenarios, if you have the signs, 
of each, you can always tell when it's spontaneous or when it's non-spontaneous. So this table is going to be extremely important when you're looking at the spontaneity of a reaction. So the third scenario is going to get a little more complicated. So what we're going to look at in this third scenario is we're going to look at an exothermic reaction, which means delta H is negative, and a negative change in entropy. Okay, so we are increasing the order. If this is the case, then your sign of delta G depends on temperature. So again, look at this reaction, okay, and we have a negative and a negative. Okay, well, notice we have negative minus a negative, so we end up having plus. So negative delta H plus T delta S. So notice that without the values, we can't really tell if this would be spontaneous or not, but we could have an idea. So if this T value is low, right, say, you know, 10 Kelvin, then this overall positive value will also be low, which means your delta G would be negative, right? Because at a low temperature, this value, this T delta S would be small. So that's, think of like having negative 100 plus 10. That would be negative 90. So delta G is spontaneous at low temperatures, but at high temperatures, it would be non-spontaneous. So instead, think if it was negative 100 plus 200, right? That would end up being positive. And in order for it to be spontaneous, delta G has to be negative. So we're looking for negative delta G for spontaneity. So as an example, think about the freezing of water. You're going from liquid water to solid water. So you're freezing the liquid to a solid. A small amount of heat is released when you freeze something. And think about entropy. You're becoming more ordered here. So your delta S is also negative. So just think about the process of freezing, right? At a low enough temperature, water will freeze. So, you know, if you're at 273 Kelvin, which is zero degrees Celsius, the water will freeze. So that is spontaneous. But if you are at 373 Kelvin, or 100 degrees Celsius, that reaction is not spontaneous. So notice that it depends on the temperature. And again, that's when your signs are both the same, when they're both negative. So the fourth and final scenario is assuming that delta H and delta S are both positive. So again, we have the same signs. So delta H and delta S, like before, instead of being negative though, they're positive. So that means that we have an endothermic reaction and an increase in disorder. The sign of delta G is going to depend on temperature. It's just the opposite of the last scenario that we looked at. So if you are looking at this equation again, delta H is positive, delta S is positive. So let's just plug in numbers. Let's say we have 100 kilojoules minus T times, let's say, 50 kilojoules per Kelvin, right? Units aren't super important for us right now. We're just thinking about this qualitatively, but I just want to put numbers so that it helps you out. So we have 100 kilojoules for delta H, 50 kilojoules. Notice they're both positive. Okay, well, at a low enough temperature, if T was 10 Kelvin, at a low enough temperature, this delta G would be positive. So this would be non-spontaneous at low temperatures. But if T gets high enough, say even 100 Kelvin, delta G is then going to become negative. So an example of this would be um, the evaporation of liquid water to gaseous water. So when you're going from liquid to gas, your delta H is positive. Um, so heat is absorbed. And then the change in entropy is also positive. You're going from liquid to gas. And so then think about what temperature water has to boil at, right? When does water have to boil for it to be spontaneous? Well, it has to boil at a high temperature. So if you have a cup of water sitting on the, on the desk at room temperature, it's not spontaneous. So at low temperatures, delta G is positive. At high temperatures, delta G is negative. So I think this table does a very, very good job of summarizing, summarizing sorry, these scenarios for you. So you definitely want to know this table. Um, notice that when delta H is negative and delta S is positive, so it's exothermic and you're increasing the disorder, that's always spontaneous. So that's the best scenario is exothermic and increasing disorder. Um, it's always non-spontaneous when it's endothermic and and you are increasing the order, right? That's opposite what the universe wants. So that's always non-spontaneous. And then when they're the same sign, that's when you really need to focus on 
that equation and figure out, you know, kind of problem solve and figure out what you'd have to do when and really, really pay attention to this negative sign. Okay, remember, if you're subtracting a negative, it ends up becoming positive.